Hey Tube, so uh, we are going down uh, Flagpole Knob toward Union Springs and there is this optional um, obstacle we're going to go over. This is probably similar to the, um, the most difficult part of Crawler Ridge or uh, maybe the hardest line on Tip Top um, at Roush. Or uh, these obstacles are probably smaller than what you see on M, maybe similar to like Bam Bam in size. So anyway, um, it's basically just a small little step, and with, like you can see, basically, essentially the entire obstacle like in the view frame right now. Uh, but you're gonna get a much better view shortly um, when the other jeeps go over it, and that's how you go up it. So here I am, and I set the camera on the ground, and then uh, he's gonna go and pick up the camera and uh, give us a much better um, point of view of the obstacle. Now keep in mind I'm on 40s. Um, I think I have the largest tires of the group. So here's the obstacle, and there's multiple ways you can go up this obstacle, um, but the most difficult way to go is essentially um, through this like gap right here, um, but there's a line to the left and a line to the right, and you'll see uh, at different points the Jeeps um, make attempts at the different lines. So um, like I've said in previous videos, um, you want to steer from the rear. So what that means is to get the tires where you want them at, you have to be lined up appropriately. So here we go, I'm going up, and I fell in that hole, unfortunately. Um, but I still like make it over, and uh, um, kind of quick and painless. Hey YouTube, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to just provide a little bit of feedback, make this a little bit of a learning lesson. So uh, her vehicle doesn't have lockers, her vehicle isn't on 40, so obviously this is gonna be more difficult for her. And she also doesn't have skids going across the entire bottom of her vehicle like I have. Um, so she has to be a little bit more careful with her vehicle than, than I do. Um, so she's obviously going to go to a little bit of an easier line, or what is perceived as an easier line, which is right there. And she obviously has one spotter that's giving your direction, which is like the right thing to do. Um, you should not have three people giving you different directions. Um, it's totally fine to give the spotter advice, um, but the driver should only be listening to one person, that's what she's doing. Now it's a clear um, indicator that she does not have lockers or she does not have them engaged because when you look at the tires when she goes up, you'll only see one tire spin at a time. Um, you won't see like the front and rear tire on the same side um, spin, um, spinning essentially and so that tells you that uh, there's an open differential. So you see it there, but now you see that there's only a rear tire spinning. Um, it'll alternate on, on which ones are on spinning so she has open diffs. So that's going to make it obviously a little bit more challenging, but, but that's fine. And so right now, uh, from this point of view, it looks like she has a traction problem, but I know from later on in the video it's not a traction problem. Uh, but to point out, if you ever do have a traction problem and you're in a situation like this, and there isn't something that like causing you to not go up other than just traction, sometimes you can move the steering wheel left and right, and just moving the steering wheel left and right, like half a turn, um, will get you up on the obstacle, because you can just like get the right little amount of grip that you need to get up. So now we're going to walk around our vehicle, which is like always a good thing to do when somebody's stuck. And look at all the angles to see what's going on. The first thing that's noticed is the hitch. Now you notice he put the hitch pin back in the hitch. The hitch pin is that little tiny piece of metal with the, like the clip. The hitch pin is, is very, very strong. That is a tow recovery point. Um, a lot of people don't realize that that hitch pin is like it holds a hitch in. <laughs> it's extremely strong. So you could easily just put a strap or whatever on that hitch pin and use that hitch pin to um, get yourself unstuck. Um, so that's just a little like tip to throw out. Um, you know, always carry a hitch pin with you if you have a trailer hitch. Even if you don't plan on towing, like just keep the hitch pin part of it. Um, and you could have that in your like glove box or whatever. So at this point they're changing spotters, um, obviously. And uh, not only are they changing spotters, but they're also changing the approach that she's taking um, a little bit. It's still essentially um, the same line. It's just a, a little, there's some small little like adjustments that are happening. So I don't see anything immediately wrong from this angle, but obviously the two of them are looking at the other side. So there is a problem on the other side. So now we're gonna walk over here and we're gonna look at the other side. So this is a problem. So basically she can't move forward because of that uh, little cliff there that's like blocking your tire. So there's basically two fixes for this that I immediately can see watching the video. The number one hit um, fix would be to put some small rocks 
in front of her tire to make a little like ramp so then you know she could go over that obstacle but if she goes over that obstacle it would kind of tilt her a lot to the driver's side and make her very um, off camber which would be really kind of scary that probably wouldn't be the suggestion that I would give them the second option would be to move her rear end um, to the left like a couple feet and how do you do that right so I said in like a couple of videos back or whatever um, you always want to steer from the rear and that's like that's not what's not happening here and what I mean by um, steer from the rear is basically she needs to back up like like 10 feet and then reapproach the obstacle but she's turning in the wrong direction right now you can tell okay like um, when I say reapproach she has to reapproach the obstacle facing a different like the other direction so then when she gets to where she was the rear tires are like lined up differently and that would have gotten her over in that spot so now she's going over the obstacle I believe in a different spot altogether but the problem now is the obstacle is so large it's resting on her uh, um, lower control arms. So the fix for this, which you know, I, I obviously, you know, I'm trying to give out advice also, is basically to stack rocks. And so the general idea here is basically we don't want her lower control arm like rubbing against that big rock step. So we're gonna put some rocks under there, and unfortunately, like that's not enough rocks. And that's my hand like pointing, like, hey, you need more rocks. Um, we need, we need to get enough rocks underneath there to get it so she can basically get up on the obstacle so the first attempt didn't work but the first attempt like i said it didn't have enough rocks and all we're doing with the rocks is just getting it so she's getting off the control arm because obviously you know you want the wheels on the ground you don't want like control arms like rubbing on rocks like because then you'll bend control arms and i've been you know both my control arms to the point that like we had to take the rock rails off to get the wheels to turn. <laughs> like, like stupid amounts of uh, bending of uh, control arms. Like, I, I know all about like, like you don't want to do that. Um, and I know that from like the bad way, not the good way. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, we're gonna just uh, go ahead and I think that we have enough rocks there probably. Just so um, you know, the tires are gonna be there, and she just goes over it, and she should be good. Voila. There we go. And there's an example of how to do it with a smaller vehicle. Hey YouTube, so here is the next uh, um, victim, so to speak, that's gonna be going after uh, this obstacle. Now once again, this is the same obstacle that we had before. Um, the only difference is he's approaching the obstacle from yet another angle. And that's what makes this interesting because every time uh, a driver approaches uh, this obstacle, um, they have the choice to do it a little bit differently, which means that like it's a slightly different challenge and um, you know it's a slightly different trail, and that keeps it you know fresh and fun. Um, now, once again, he has smaller uh, tires also, and he does not have the lockers. And uh, right there, you can see that basically he is just um, you know sitting on the rocks. So he's going to need to have um, some rocks stacked up to get him up there, it looks like. I honestly am not really 100% sure why we're not stacking rocks for him at this point. Um, but that's, that's probably what he needs to get over this obstacle. stack them up just the same way that we stacked them up for her and that should be like what he needs to get over it I mean I don't see any other uh, major problems other than the rocks moving um, on him like that's not something they control um, but that's like essentially what I'm seeing um, the problem is like once again there's still not enough rocks to get him over it I think that if he backed up like a foot just looking at it from this side um, but maybe there is an issue on the other side but if there's an issue on the other side like once again we can stack rocks on that side too but 
the step is actually awfully pretty, uh, pretty good sized for a vehicle um, with, with that tire size. So you, what you're going to see here is you're going to see a very smart driver. Um, and when I say smart, um, essentially he's just realized that like um, he thinks that the obstacle is probably a little bit just too big or too dangerous for his vehicle. And that's totally fine, um, being smart and logical and everything. And he is going to choose a completely different line to get up, which that's that's cool. Um, so, you know, I don't hold anything against anybody that, that uh, does things a little bit differently. And uh, so there's a line that he picked. It's There's still a little bit of a step there. It's still not like trivial at all, um, especially for his vehicle. Um, it's obviously a much smaller step than what he had before. But they are uh, lining them up for like a slightly different angle to come up this. And anybody who's done like other obstacles, like, say like Tip Top at Roush or Crawler Ridge, um, you don't see like all the vehicles go up the hardest line or Yellow Jacket or we can name any kind of large um, kind of step obstacle. Um, vehicles take all kinds of different lines. So uh, this Jeep I don't know very well, so I'm just checking it out. I like to look underneath Jeeps uh, before I give any kind of spot advice, but in the end I, I didn't actually have to do any spotting. Um, what I looked for under his vehicle was just to see which skid plates he had and he doesn't have any, like the only skid plate that is there is a factory one, which is really, really, really tiny. Um, so basically that means that like, um, if we're not careful, we could puncture his gas tank or his oil pan or um, like all kinds of bad things could obviously happen. He has a very nice vehicle, very similar to mine, um, except mine is covered in steel on the bottom. So I think he's on 35s, he obviously has lockers, and uh, he's going to use the lockers. Uh, so his vehicle should be more than capable of getting up this obstacle. The trick is though being careful, um, because he doesn't have that like extra like protection. So you can see right here, um, he's on his uh, rear control arms. You can see like the rocks there, and uh, the rear tires are just like starting to lift off the ground just a little bit. So basically what's going to have to happen is uh, because of the tire size versus the obstacle size, either he's going to have to bump it and, and potentially bend his control arms or we're just going to have to put a couple rocks um, there for him and then uh, he'll be fine. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, stack the rocks which is probably the, the better idea of the two. And uh, once we get some rocks stacked, um, he can uh, give a shot at it. Now obviously the obstacle itself is pretty narrow if you look at that front tire. Um, so basically we need to keep him going in the correct direction. Um, because this obstacle is so large, there is like, you know, a chance of like rolling over or any kind of like badness. And there, like the badness doesn't happen, I'll just like let you know that ahead of time so you don't feel all like paranoid about it or anything. Um, but right there you can see how he um, he slid off the obstacle, and the reason why he slid off the obstacle is because I don't think there's enough rocks. And um, basically, um, he started moving forward, and then um, that rear tire just like hit the, ro the rock, the rear tire on the driver side, and because the rear tire on the driver side hit an, uh, a very big obstacle, and the, the other side didn't have an obstacle, it just tilted him in the driver side. So, you know, he made the same decision that uh, the XJ made, which is basically to play it safe. And there's nothing wrong with playing it safe. Um, that's actually really, like, a, a very smart move to make. Um, and he's just going to skip the obstacle, which that's totally fine. I'm not going to hold anything against him for skipping an obstacle. And uh, then we will move on to uh, the next Jeep. Once again, um, you know, I think it was a very smart move of his um, because, like I said, he doesn't have like the skid plates on the bottom, so he can't do quite as much um, dumb stuff that, that I can without uh, um, having a little bit of, um, you know, extra assurances. 
So this was our uh, our pickup Jeep, and they just skip it all together. They're not really interested in breaking their vehicle, and that's totally cool too. Um, there's no reason to feel like you're you have to be compelled to do um, you know like large obstacles 